Hello. I'm so sorry for being off for almost an hour. My computer overheated. Then I had to give, give it some time to cool down. And then my program I'm using for this, it wouldn't work. So, so anyway, we're just going to continue from, from where we left off. Let's see, where did, it, where did I leave off? Oh, it, it was on this grade. It was on this grade right here. I have to reopen my mini map and let's get back to what I was doing. This is the horse pen run mine, which is again only a three track mine. <laughs> Alright, the others. Haven't been completed yet, but the excuse me, the most notable feature of the rest of it is the switchback, which limits the length of trains. Anyway, we're gonna go back to the main line. We're gonna go, go back to the main line here at Ralston, starting from the yard. Trains start down the grade near the end of the siding. Go, th go through Roaring Branch. And then, and of course, there's some more curves. Here's the town. Here's the town of, of Ellington, named after a place on the Susquehanna and New York Railroad. Some of, the, some of the town names in this area are references to the book I mentioned earlier, Set Up Running. Although Ellington was not mentioned in that particular one. Anyway, so here's the Gray's Run sighting, named after another, well, a place in the SNNY that was abandoned pretty early. So, Lake Wynn, also a place on the SNNY. And, and, and Rock Run was a creek along which the railroad followed. So here, here trains pull into, into Northumberland, which is, which is also the helper base for the, for the south side of the grade. There's a small yard here and, a, and pretty decent station facilities. Remember that this is in the double track main. Again, yet this is just a siding. You can see we have all the facilities needed here. So from this point, for at least for a while, the terrain kind of flattens out. When the train crosses the creek again, it goes to the town of Muncie. By the way, North Northumberland and Muncie were named after points in the Williamsport Division, Maine. Nisbet was another, another name for Linden, which was a coaling station in the Williamsport Division, Maine. And so was McClellan. Oh, I apologize for that dog barking. I'm currently in South Carolina, and I'm streaming from from, from my mom's house down, down here, and that's her dog barking, so I apologize for that. Here's Coles. I was originally naming it something else, but I couldn't change the station sign, and I had already laid it down, so whatever. So here's Canton, named after a sighting on the, on the Elmira branch. See from this, you can see it kind of it's really straight as an arrow here. Here's Raritan, back to New Jersey names. Southport, named after Southport Yard in Elmira. And then here we're getting more towards the end of the route. Here's Newberry. And then we temporarily joined the, the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western here at Phillipsburg. And that's the real location. There's a set of crossovers here, and then we cross the Delaware River and into Pennsylvania on the on. I'm not sure what I should call this bridge, but the bridge itself is the Poughkeepsie Bridge, which, as anyone familiar with Northeastern railroading knows, that's a loca that's a lo that's a now abandoned railroad bridge across the Hudson and Poughkeepsie, New York, currently the end of commuter service on that line. 
But anyway, so back to where. No, it's not that I think of it. Well, not much has happened on this side of the railroad. I suppose maybe I've done a little bit. I think I might have done a little bit of scenery over here. I'm gonna apologize for the for the game continuing to freeze. But yeah, I did I, I did do a few houses here, but other than that, pretty much nothing. The line is is mostly operable now, and I did run a test session on it. So anyways, so at this point, well, I'm gonna replace the catenary that I have because of the fact that this is like a wanna catenary here. And what well this is this isn't the Lackawanna, although it's somewhat inspired by it. So now I can close my mini map. Oops, typo. And I mean, any suggestions are very much welcome, like it says in the description. And So now I'm gonna. See. I'm gonna try and see. So what we have here. Since everything is like two. Oh, whatever. You can see DL and W, that's, that's Lackawanna Railroad. <sighs> now, I, I have to move, move that chat screen so I can see. That's better. I'll probably I can't really see this catenary, so I'm gonna have to wait for wait for this until until I have a better opportunity to take care of this like like when I have more scenery completed. So anyway, so I'm gonna give an update on the trains forums around the around the new year. Although on New Year's Day it will be busy at the Elmhurst Model Railroad Club, so I won't be working on the route on that day. And also tomorrow morning I have a I'm flying back to Chicago and of course bring my desktop with me as I brought it with me the first time. Oh god, I'm so sorry about this computer. I'm trying to save up enough money to try and get a new graphics card for this thing. I think it's just that there's so much to load in this particular area. So the uh, on the what's currently on the right side of this yard, do you guys do you guys think that I should just put like some maybe a small like forested area or should I put like like a a city, business district, residential. I really don't, don't know what to do with these. What with this like really large area? Of course, the, of course. No, I'm not gonna put an intermodal term. Uh, oh yeah, there's this there's this area in the middle of my main freight yard. I was working on. I put a freight house here. I was gonna put. I was planning to put an an intermodal. I guess it wouldn't be intermodal. It'd be, it'd be TOFC or tra trailer on flat car. So let's see. What, go back to back to my track. So 
So, this really, I guess I should put a, just a couple of TOFC ramps here. Anyway, for, for those of you who, ju who just joined, the, the rules for the chat are in the description of, and I mentioned this in the first live stream att attempt that I, that I made today that unfortunately failed. And so, so just general rule is just please think before you speak. If you wouldn't say it to your grandma, don't say it to me. So anyway. Oh, stupid thing keeps keeps freezing up on me. And I really don't know how to build uh, one of these TOFC ramps. Okay, I guess I'll just have to kind of wing it here. Okay, I don't even know whether they should, they should be stub end tracks or... Or whether they should be... They should have a yard ladder on both ends both ends. Again, I'm not an expert on this, so any advice would be very much appreciated. Remember, this is not pre-recorded right here. This is this is this is all entirely live. I don't have enough space on my computer to pre-record. So this is just generally how I how I build yard ladders, station throats, anything anything like that that I need. I learned this I learned this strategy from watching the live streams of Approach Medium. By the way, I bought his Pennsylvania and Berwind route, which I highly recommend, although although it can only be used in Trains New Era, which. Probably one of my future live streams will be in Trains of New Era. It's just that I have to, it'll take so long to to upload this route to a CDP file and take care of all the dependencies and everything. So looking at this, I, I know that it shouldn't be like a huge facility, which. I guess this 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 area should be like some. There should be something over here. But over here is there just has to be some space between the engine servicing facilities and everything else on the route. Then again, I apologize for the background noise. As much as I as I wish that these walls had better insulation, they don't. So. I'd have to deal with it with the way that things are. And generally, I have a tendency to make my switches way too tight, which I, I guess is fine for an for an interurban, but but not not fine for a class one railroad, at least in most places. Like there are places where I suppose I could, I could have really tight switches, like on that street running section in, in Newark that I that I gave a tour of during the first live stream. Not 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 as in my first live stream today, as in the first episode. Look, look on my YouTube channel for that if you're curious. Uh, this I have to move a little bit. But I can have a little bit more more leeway with with this '50s era stuff rather than you know the modern '89 foot flat cars and auto racks and everything else. Because remember, when it comes to TOFC back back then, we're dealing with 40, 40 foot cars, maybe 50 foot. And 
I don't even know if there were any 60 foot car cars that existed back then. Maybe like maybe some of those like special duty cars. But other, other than that, I really don't know. So anyone who's able to to give me some kind of some kind of advice about about these it would be really helpful. And again, I really apologize for that. I really apologize for, for all the freezing. It's something we're going to have to deal with at this point. I don't know if you guys can hear me, so I, I should probably just shut up until until it unfreezes. All right, here we here we go again. Like I, was, like I was saying, if you guys couldn't hear me, oh, shoot, here we go again. This is essentially how I think this this yard is going to work is that. It, Obviously, it's a it's a it's a, it's a f flat switching yard, meaning no hump or anything like that. But, but the nice thing about about any train simulator, not just trains, is that unlike model railroading, there are no size restrictions so I can just really model whatever I want. Currently my my planned HO layout is going to be only a, pretty much a small engine terminal and a siding based off of the actual town of Ralston, Pennsylvania. So as you can, as you can see I'm Building the lead from the fr from the freight house to the to the yard leads. So so it it seems that building the route has has been going okay so far. Although I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's been w without setbacks. So anyway, I guess I should probably go and do some actual scenery rather than just build more track because I don't want that you know, spaghetti bowl look that you see on some model railroads. I'm not criticizing the designers of those track plans trying to fit as much space, well as much operation into the space as possible, but it just doesn't really look as good. Well, the other thing is I added a I added a road from the from some of these term well, from the ferry barge terminal. Sorry, I can't speak today. All the way up up this up this hill right here, and you can see, probably from my, from episode one you can see this hill is new. I decided there at, there has to be some reason for the track to follow the, this hill way over here. So I, I created another hill, and these are always time consuming, by the way. So I'm just going to lay down. I'm just going to lay down some textures. I'm, 
I'm not really ready to, to actually lay down the. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm not ready to lay down trees yet because they have a tendency to slow down the frame rate. Hey, wait a second! Didn't jointed rail have some have some really good textures? Yeah, jointed jointed rail always always has good stuff. JR grass. This should be a decent forest floor texture. This is just going to be kind of kind of my baseline for, for this particular area. You know, as much as I wish that this this could be a route where I where I only have to use assets that are where I can only use assets that are on the download station. Sadly, with you know, the, for one, there's just some ex there's some just some excellent assets you know, from from third-party content creators that are that, that are like really useful. Such as these textures or really any. I'm not really using jointed rail buildings as much because they're a little too modern for this route, at least for the most part. But, but like I just said, I am using their textures. Right. My goal with this route is to kind of create a prosperous railroad in the, 50, in the 40s, 50s, maybe into the 60s, depending on just, just how things turn out. So I'm gonna have to. I might, I might just want to go just one, in one square at a time and do that, and do that grid thing because that, that's gonna be a huge pain in the neck. This. And then, and then the areas outside of this I'll just fill in by hand. But this tool is really useful for those times like when I when I need like large areas of textures. Because it's just so it's just so time consuming to do them by hand. And again, there are going to be some areas where we'll have to do the majority of the square by hand, but it, but having this tool really does help. As you can see, I can I can just go out on the map and oh, and by the way, that that road is from that road is from JR originally. So, thank you to Jointed Rail. I'll have to. Th when I release the route, I'm going to go th go through all the dependencies and find where they came from and create a, and create a list. And then, if there's something that's that's no longer out there, like if the site was shut down, then I'll just have to request per permission from the site owner in order to do that. Well, or if the site owner is not available, I'll just have to replace the asset. You see, at this point, at this point, you can just see how how much work I've been I've been able to do. Maybe I should, maybe I should even do it do it on these and just just as they say, forget about it. Hey, this is New Jersey here, so. And then, 
Everything else can kind of be fixed later. This whole area along the Hudson here is going to be is going to be a bit of a problem. Oh, and I just I just realized something. I can. I have I have better tunnel. I have better tunnels than these. And they're tunnels that will allow me to just use regular track with them. So anyway. I'm looking for the right, I'm looking for the right one. So if you notice that, you know, this is all for the Pennsylvania Railroad, and there, um, there you know, line up, line up under under the Hudson River. I just noticed that, that this whole thing just just look, looked, you know, period period appropriate, as in the, as in the tunnel and everything else. I'll deal with the catenary later, and necessary. I'll ask the content creator. I know the content creator that, that made these tunnels. He did a, a couple of bridges for kind of a stillborn. You can call it a stillborn project. I was going to do modern era Chicago. But that project felt kind of fell through due to and these these like time restrictions and everything. So it's, so the hard part. You know, one of the, one of the things I hate most about about route creation is when I have to to get rid of these dig holes. Just such a it's just such a pain to deal with. But it's it's absolutely time consuming. I wish I'd I wish I'd actually thought before I had before I'd done something like this. This it's just how long it's, it's taking just just to do one side of it. Probably the, the dig holes on the other side I'll, I'll keep because since the tunnel is going to be on a slight <laughs> downgrade, I'm going to have to deal with that anyway. By the way, this this terrain thing, it's just it's kind, of called a, kind of a freak phenomenon that happens. These, I don't know whether it's designed to be that way or not, but I sure don't like it. So anyway, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to reconstruct these tunnels. Oh, oh, these have third, these have third rail in them, but things are sadly having third, having third rail it isn't. Isn't what my isn't what's needed, since after all I am doing the catenary on, on the Pennsylvania, and that's what they used. I suppose it's okay to have third to have third rail in the tunnel, but I guess that mainly service something something that's more useful for a switching maneuver than an actual than an actual long distance train. So what I do to, 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 to try and make sure that my tunnels are okay is I go through them until they dis until they disappear below the ground and it's no longer visible. And then go going back over here, I have to, I need to see if this number of, of dig holes 
It was adequate. And it looks like it is, so I managed to, to replace this tunnel with something that actually re resembles the real thing better. <coughs> I still have no idea what I was thinking. I still have no idea what I was thinking to try and, try and use the, the Mariah's Pass tunnels. Anyway, I have to erase the, the other side's dig holes on, on this side of the Hudson. And the reason I can't lay water over the tunnels in the river like it is in the prototype is, is because I've learned from experience on a Chicago L project that I did that, that it makes it seem like it's underwater if you put water over it. So I just have to have a break in the water and just I'm just try and hide that break in the water. I've gotten a lot of inspiration from a particular from from a particular route that I that I downloaded called I, think, I forgot what it was called I think something like Redbird Transit Authority inspired by the New York City subway or elevated or whatever. I don't know the inspiration of it. It was a very good route. It was. It was designed more from from the oper operator's perspective. I get depending on what you'd call it. I guess it would be motorman or conductor or engineer or whatever. All right. So now that this is now that this is taken care of, I can later probably off camera I'll begin construction on Penn, on Penn Station. Over here is Exchange Place. Turns out that this, in my, in my test scenario, this this worked very well. Other than the than the glitch that this four nine nine two two build of trains twelve has, where where engines get stuck get stuck at, at any kind of industry like a water plug. The water plugs I used on the branch line. Alright, so anyway, what I was saying is that the water plugs that I used on the, on the, on the main line on that siding were trackside objects. They don't actually load water, unfortunately, but they are, those are Pennsylvania Railroad standard design. And I've just decided to include a lot of Penn C influence here. So anyway, here's an ex exchange place. So I'm gonna have to. So I, I, I built another custom warehouse off camera. So I mean, do you guys think that this is adequate? Do you guys think this at least a somewhat prototypical design or? Like, you know, there's, there's rail loading docks and there's truck loading docks. I'm real sorry that this thing loads so slow. It's, it's an issue I've been really unable to avoid. So I've been kind of thinking that I should... Like, should this area just be, like, just plain concrete or should there be, like, some weeds in it or something? I think I might want to go with the weeds thing. 
let's see. Uh, yes, this is uh, JR's grass is very useful. And please, no jokes about that. Over the just after Thanksgiving, I don't think it was even after Thanksgiving. I purchased a bunch of Droidy Rails routes. They released actually most of them, I think. I got American Intermodal, Eagle River, pretty much everything else. Everything else that they had, and all of their routes are excellent. That I noticed that they that this is what they were using for grass on those on those routes. So this is what I'm using here since grass isn't, isn't bound by any particular time period. Okay. Now, I, I like to use assets that, that are more generic, at least in terms of scenery. Although, in some like railroad facilities, like my example would be water plugs. You do want them to be railroad specific. But other than that, well, water plugs, depots, the, those buildings you want to be railroad specific. Again, for like, for like grasses and trees and everything, you want something that's that's pretty generic, like for the region. And for trees, I'll probably just go with stuff that tends to grow in the north, in the northeast. Okay, maple, birch. Anyone, anyone who lives in the northeast could probably help me, help me out with this. So at one point, I was I was looking at some photos of. Of the Pennsylvania's approach to Exchange Place Terminal, and I've noticed that it was a it is a, it is a, a very large structure, so it was grade separated, and and all that good stuff that, that local governments love. I believe it was electrified. So then I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and so this is just generally how we're gonna cover. Different areas of, uh, of the route that be areas l l like this where you kind of you know don't, don't really know what to do with it. And of course, these kind of triangular shaped areas between between tracks is the really hard part. So I'm just, you know, just, just making some, like, kind of final, you know, adjust, adjustments on, on this. This is the thing I hate about, about trains, is that it's, it's really hard to accurate, accurately position things when there's spline points involved. I suppose it's kind of a weakness with all train simulators, but... Of course, there was only one time when I attempted to build a route in Railworks, 
I, I, I still have it, but it just turned out pretty, really terribly. And I couldn't figure out anything about that program, so... And again, don't, don't worry, I'm not doing anything crazy with the... With, with this grass, I'm just trying to get it to a point where it works. And again, these things are very hard to position, so... I don't know what you guys think of this, gra this grass area. Should I put like, should I put like, a, I think I'm, maybe I should put a few trees in it, or at least like smaller, smaller trees, just to kind of break up the monotony. Anyway, so this area is literally like the. These kind of areas are the most time-consuming part of any route. So they have to be pretty accurately positioned. I would say this. That this route turned. I would say that this part turned out okay. <laughs> 